Hello, in session 5 of the Query Manager tutorials, we'll discuss and demonstrate the use of runtime prompts for a more effective data search. We'll continue where we left off using Lens Query Example 4. In the previous session, we demonstrated the use of multiple criteria and showed the why and the how to using group criteria. Additionally, we demonstrated the use of the condition type inList with the criteria expression to list multiple data elements for filtering the data we were looking for. However, the downside of this is that we would have to modify the criteria each time we need to list different US states or whatever data we need to filter. A better way to go is by use of the prompt. This feature allows us to selectively choose the data based on a value provided when running the query. In other words, our data inputs can be variable. As you can see from the Edit Criteria Properties Expression 2 type can be a prompt. Let's begin by running Lens Query Example 4 to refresh what our results look like. We can see that if we wish to get information about another state or any variable for that matter, we would have to modify the query and rerun each time. We'll start off by creating a basic prompt giving the user a two-letter abbreviation from a list of all 50 states. We'll select the Prompts tab and select the Add Prompt button to edit prompt properties. Here, we'll search and find the prompt field name, that is, State. We can also specify the heading type either short or long or enter our own heading text and that's what we'll do. Our text will be state 1. Type will be character. Format will leave as upper. Length and decimals will leave as is. Now we'll select edit type to identify a prompt table that will be used to select a state from a defined list of US states stored in a table. We'll use the prompt table lookup that is to select a prompt table to search for states in the United States. A reasonable search would be to search by name that contains the string state. Here with 62 results we still might need to narrow our search results. Let's search by state and US in the string. We'll use the wildcard percent and enter state percent US. Here we'll choose the record state underscore table underscore US underscore VW. Take note that sometimes trial and error may be necessary to help locate the most useful table for your query needs. Select OK. Notice that the table now has an alias in the prompts list as colon one equal. And from the heading type text that we entered, state 1, we see the prompt as colon 1 equals state 1. So here in this Query Manager page, all we did is add a prompt. Nothing else has changed. So now we need to add the criteria where the state is equal to a prompt. We will need to edit the criteria. First, let's change the condition type to equal to. Notice how the Choose Expression 2 type changes. We'll choose Expression 2 type and select the radio button for Prompt. Now we can define the prompt by using the lookup icon and select the prompt colon 1 equal state 1. Notice in the Expression 2 the defined prompt is the alias prompt colon 1. Also note in most cases you can create a new prompt and edit a prompt from the Edit Criteria Properties. Select OK. We can now see the criteria is defined as state equal to colon 1. Now let's run and we see the prompt appear and when we select the lookup icon we now see search results from that table allowing us to locate and select the two-letter abbreviation for that state. We'll select Michigan and view the results. As you can see, our variable in this example is a choice of states. We no longer need to make edit changes to the query each time we need results from a different variable. So now, if we wanted to have two or more states or variables to select from, we can go back and add a second prompt and use the inList condition type. 
Let's do this from the criteria. We'll select New Prompt. Properties will be the same as before, but we'll enter the heading type text to be State 2. And the edit type, we'll select Prompt Table and select the same U.S. State Table. Select OK. Notice now we have a second prompt in the prompts list. Now let's go back to criteria and edit the condition type back to inlist. Notice the query manager saved our previous inlist members. Here we'll select the checkboxes and delete the checked values. Now we'll select add prompt to add the two new aliases colon 1 and colon 2 as the new list members. Select OK and notice the criteria expression. Now let's run the query and select Michigan and Wisconsin and view the results, noting the same results as when we hard-coded the state into the inlist condition. As a result, we can use our prompts with an inlist condition type. So now let's just use one state. We'll edit criteria to use equal to. We'll choose expression type to be prompt and we'll edit prompt 1 to modify the heading text to be state. And for define prompt, we'll select colon 1 equal state. Select OK. Now let's make this more interesting and add a prompt for the city field. We'll open the prompts tab and add a prompt for the city. The edit prompt properties will need to be modified according to the required needs for a city prompt. Begin by selecting city for the field name. Type will be character. Heading type and text we can keep as is. The format should be mixed case and the string length should be long enough for a common city name and decimals will leave as is. We'll create prompt 3 and use no table edit as we will have to manually input the city name for the selected state. Select OK. Now we'll add another criteria for the city condition type equal to and for the expression to type we'll select prompt. And from the defined prompt lookup we'll select colon 3 equals city. Select OK. Let's run and we see our runtime prompt. We'll use the lookup to find California and we'll enter the city M-A-L-I. And we can see our text string entered must match exactly. We'll run it again and enter the complete text and view the results. Let's edit the criteria for the city and change the condition type to like. By using like for the condition type, the text value entered may be a string that contains a wildcard character. There are two wildcard characters that PeopleSoft recognizes, the percent symbol and the underscore. Select OK. Let's run and select the state as California and now we'll enter the city. the string MA followed by the percent symbol. So we see that using the condition type like could be very useful in prompts where the spelling of an entry is uncertain. And note, we can modify the city prompt text for our users that indicates a percent sign may be used as a wildcard to complete the search string. Now, let's see how we can use the prompt with a translate table. In our personal data record, we'll select gender. In the fields tab, we'll see that this field uses a translate table, which is necessary to use edit type translate table in the prompt properties. We'll add a new prompt for gender. The field name is gender. For edit type, select Translate Table. 
Let's change the heading type to text and enter gender in the heading text field. And select OK. And in the Fields tab, we'll also change the field heading to gender and change the translate value to long and select OK. In the Criteria tab, we'll add criteria. Let's search for the field gender. And choose the expression to type to be prompt. And for define prompt, we'll use the lookup and select gender as the prompt. And then select OK. Now when we run, we are prompted for state, city, and gender. Let's enter CA and Malibu, and from the gender pull-down, we'll select female. And select OK and view the results. Now let's do one more prompt type for the yes-no. Back to the Query tab and let's select full-time student. In the Prompts tab, we'll select the field name as FT Student. We'll change the heading text to FT Student, open parens, check for yes, close parens. And we'll choose the edit type to be yes, no table. Select OK. In the Criteria tab, we'll add the field FT Student for Expression 1 equal to and the prompt to be colon 5, full-time student. Select OK and Run. We'll enter our required data and view the results. Now let's remove the fields gender and full-time student as well as the criteria for both those fields. And their prompts may be removed if no longer needed. Another great use of the prompts can be within a date range. Let's see how this is done. Let's find a field with a date which we can use to demonstrate this. We'll use birth date. In the Query tab, select birth date. In the Fields tab, we see the field is added. And let's simplify the query and we'll remove the criteria for state prompt. We'll run this, enter a city. We see all the employees for that city listed with their birth dates. Now, let's create a date prompt between a set of dates. It should be obvious that we'll need two prompts. Select Add Prompt and let's find a prompt field for birth date. The type will be date and the format will use none. We'll use our own heading text as born after. Select OK and we'll add another birth date prompt for born before. Now we'll use these two prompts in the criteria and add criteria. For expression 1, we'll select the field birth date. And for condition type, we'll select between. 
Notice we now see expression 2 as a selection of two dates as constant values. If we choose the radio button for expression expression, we can then have the option to add prompt for each. We'll select the born after prompt for the first define and the prompt born before for the second define and select OK. Now when we look at the criteria we see our criterion with the condition type between with prompts 4 and 5. Let's try this out. Select Run. Let's enter a city and select some dates and view the results. So now you see the advantage of the condition type between and its usefulness when used within our date range. Now, before we end the session, let's examine the SQL code. We continue to use our personal data record using the fields ample ID, first name, city, state. But notice here there's a two underscore char SQL function which is used to transform our birth date or number data type into a displayable text string. And as we seen before, the where defines the grouped criteria and what stands out here is the condition type between with the use of the birth date field and the SQL to date function converting the dates to a text string. So before we log out, let's save the changes. And in the next session of these Query Manager tutorials, we'll get into using joins and the use of distinct. That's it. Thank you for watching.